All right, kids. So yesterday we talked about the costs of production, where quantity supplied can be labor. Fixed cost is the same no matter what. These are the costs that a business incurs, such as paying rent, their utilities, and taxes. It doesn't matter how much a company produces. Fixed costs are always the same. Variable costs depend on how much you're producing. Total cost is the total cost of fixed cost plus variable cost. Marginal cost, remember when you're thinking on the margin, that's when you're adding one more unit to production to make something. What is the cost of adding one more thing? Same thing with the studying example way back in the first unit. If I study for one more hour, do I get my credit any sooner and is it worth that? That's what marginal cost is looking at. If I make one more thing, is it worth that cost? Okay. Marginal revenue. This is kind of what we'll be talking about today is that market price or equilibrium point. It doesn't matter how much is produced. This is how much the consumer is willing to pay for that good. Okay. Total revenue is marginal revenue times quantity supplied. And profit is total revenue minus your total cost. Okay. <clears throat> so we briefly talked about equilibrium. This is the point at which the supply curve and demand curve meet. This is where we would see the price and quantity that meet the needs of the consumers as well as the suppliers without causing a shortage or a surplus. Okay, so that's this point right here. Here is the supply curve. The supply curve slopes upward, okay, because as price goes up, quantity goes up as well. Whereas with demand, right, that is an inverse relationship here. So as the price goes up, the demand goes down, okay? So equilibrium shortage is a situation in which buyers want more of a product than sellers are willing to make available at a particular price. When there is a shortage, then sellers will increase the price of a good or service because it is more scarce. This means that less consumers will demand that good. Okay. So a shortage is what you see down here. Anything below equilibrium price, okay, this point where they meet, is a shortage. Because when you look at the red supply curve, demand curve over here, right, there's more quantity demanded than there is supplied. Okay. So here is a point on a graph, and this one here, there's obviously more being demanded at this one particular price, okay? So the market, remember Adam Smith talks about an invisible hand that guides the market? This is true um, here as well, that there's this natural movement to try to make it to the equilibrium point, okay? That's here. So sellers will increase their price to here, right? Trying to make it to the equilibrium price. The market is always trying to meet the equilibrium price, okay? So, surplus is going to be the opposite. This is when the quantity supplied is more than the quantity demanded, okay? So that's anything above equilibrium, okay? If you want to make note of that in your notes, surplus is above equilibrium and shortage is below equilibrium, okay? So suppliers will decrease their prices because this item is less scarce, right? There's a lot of this. Think back to World War II, or sorry, World War I. Farmers were producing a lot of crops for the soldiers but then the war was over and nobody wanted to buy all of their crops. So now they have all this supply, right? And so to try to get rid of it because, you know, their crops and their livestock are only good for a short period of time, they're trying to lower the price. They're losing profits, okay? But that equilibrium point gets lower and lower because nobody wants it, okay? So a surplus is those livestock... Um, and crops that farmers had after World War I. Demand will increase because more buyers are willing and able to buy the good at a lower price. Whoops, okay. Changes in equilibrium. 
When a shift occurs in either or both supply and demand, then the equilibrium prices and quantity change as well. Changes will increase, decrease, or be undetermined. Okay? Make sure you make note of this in your homework. So we're going to look at that. Okay. Changes in equilibrium examples. So if I can get some ink going here. All right. So let's say that there's a new technology released for a particular company, say Subaru. Their supply increases. So that's a shift this way. That's not a straight line. Yes, I know. Okay. So we see a shift here. This is our original equilibrium price here. Now it's moved this way, okay? <coughs> so this means, Can I'm talking to Sorry, that was AJ. The new quantity is over here. Okay, so our new quantity is here. And we notice that it decreased, okay? And our new price increased, okay? Notice though, I don't know how much having this new technology has impacted the Subaru plant. So I can't say for sure if it was a small shift in supply or a large shift in supply, okay? So, when you're doing your homework, you'll have to put Q, right, the quantity has decreased and price has increased, okay, there should be an arrow up, or you can put decrease or increase, okay. Um, if we look at this other graph, let's say that this is the, um, that one's Subaru, and I'm not going to spell it right. We all know this. Um, let's do this for the market for gloves in the winter. So we know that suppliers know it's going to be cold, so they're going to increase supply, as well as demand's going to increase, okay? Because people are like, wow, my hands are gonna get cold. I'm gonna need some gloves. So our new price, right, has went up, but when you're looking at our new quantity, right, we don't know, D1, S1, how much these shifts really are. So our new quantity is undetermined, okay, you can put that as a question mark in your homework. So price has went up, quantity undetermined, or question mark for your homework, okay? So, in case I was confusing for you, I have provided you with a handy dandy chart, okay? So, up here, these are all the changes that happen in the supply curve. If the supply curve shifts to the right or increases, this is what will happen, okay? All of these are your possible answers. Supply curve shifts to the left, right? These are your possible answers. It's not just one change, right? You have to consider what happens to the demand curve too. If it's just a supply curve change, okay, then you're looking at this column. But when you start moving the demand curve as well, notice that if you're moving the demand curve and the supply curve, there are going to be particular points whoops, that are going to be undetermined in each scenario. So if both change, that means there will be at least one undetermined, okay? So if you want to make note of that in your notes for your homework, that's fine, okay? Because again, we don't know how much things are shifting we don't know if it's a little shift or a large shift. We don't have all of the different numbers in, in our homework and in all scenarios for what will happen, okay?
Remember, in economics, we just work with basic models of what's happening. Price ceiling. Price ceilings are put in place by the government to keep certain goods and services at a reasonable price. A good example of this are the rent ceilings in New York. Okay, They are set below equilibrium price. Okay, So ceiling is below. Right? You cannot price those goods above what price level the government has set. This causes a shortage, right? Because remember, shortages are below equilibrium. Suppliers won't want to sell at a lower price, and consumers will want to buy more at a lower price. So here we have this dotted line. That is a ceiling, okay? Because it's called a ceiling, if you think of a room, okay, inside a room, I told you that these markets tend to always want to meet the equilibrium price, okay? So the market wants to move up. It wants to hit this point, but guess what? It can't because it's running into the ceiling. It can't go higher than the ceiling, all right? And yes, I know you're going to make a sarcastic remark. Well, if you cut a hole in the ceiling, no, it doesn't work that way, okay? So price ceilings want to reach equilibrium, but can't. Okay, they want to go higher and increase, but they cannot. Price floor is the opposite. Okay, so this can be at the equilibrium price, that was terribly drawn, or above. Okay, this sets the lowest possible price for a product. Minimum wage is a good example. Okay, you can't pay less for this product. Suppliers want to pay you nothing, right? That's just how it is. If we can cut costs somewhere, but the government has set in minimum wage, so they can't pay you less than this particular wage, okay? So set at equilibrium price or higher. This can cause surpluses if set above equilibrium price, and you have more workers willing to be paid at a higher wage, but less employers willing to pay at that rate, okay? So price floor, right? There's a natural tendency. The supply market wants to go down, but they can't because you can't go through the floor. And yes, again, you can cut a hole in the floor and dig a hole, but that's not how this works, okay? Okay, flexibility. Prices allow resources to be used in the best possible way. Suppliers have an incentive to make profit. We know that from the first unit. Consumers have an incentive to buy more at a certain price, usually when it's cheaper. And the market makes only what will sell if there is no demand or incentive that the supplier will leave the market. Flexibility in price allows for efficiency. Okay, so all those various prices in the market allow for us to be efficient. Okay, under some circumstances, we can see a supply shock. This occurs if there are difficult times, there may be a shortage of supplies, and there becomes a problem of how to divvy up the available supply. So during hurricane or wartime, you know, when you're in a particular area, where do you give all the clean water to, okay? Um, one way the government deals with the supply shock is rationing, okay? This relates back to history. Think of World War I and World War II. This allows a fixed amount for everyone when there is a limited supply, okay? Over here are those ration books, right? You take in your coupon book, and you could get a certain amount of flour for the month, and that was it, okay? The other alternative is to raise the prices of these select goods. However, that encourages black markets. A black market is an illegal market in which goods and services are sold above their legal price. Okay? And I added that funny one in there. Okay? So that's the end of the notes for this unit. Your homework is over in the tote. Should be the equilibrium one. If you need to review this I will put a link to it on the assignment on Canvas. If you have any questions, please email me, okay?